Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Oasis Church. We're glad that you're here today and joining us, and I hope that you're glad here joining as well. Let's go ahead and stand up together as we join in worship today. Let's go and sing us out. I will sing forever. I will sing forever of your love. Come down with my hands to heaven. Shout your praises loud. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I will sing forever of your love. Come down. was blind I could not see chains of sin had shackled me the God in heaven heard my plea Jesus Jesus rescued me Jesus Jesus rescued me I've seen forever of your love come down my hands do every child your praise is loud Grace so sweet, it floods my soul. And hope eternal won't let go. My dead erased the Calvary. Jesus, Jesus, rescued me. Jesus, Jesus, rescued me. And I will sing forever of your love. Come down my hands to heaven. Shout your praises loud. I was lost in darkness. When you pull me out, I'll sing for it. Love you, love, come down. Oh, 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 Cause Jesus, Jesus rescued me And Jesus, Jesus rescued me Come on, sing it out together I will sing forever of your love Come down with my hands to heaven Shout your praises loud I was lost in darkness You pulled me out I'll sing forever pray together. God, thank you this morning uh, that you are the way maker, that you made a way for us. And that today we can trust in you and have faith in you and to know that you will never fail us. And today, even when we might not see it, we not might not feel it today, we know that you're working here in our hearts, here in this place. So God, we look to you and we worship you today. In Jesus' name. I worship you. I worship you. 
together even when I don't see it even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it, you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working Stop, you never stop oh. Waymaker, miracle worker Promise keeper Light in the darkness My God, that is who you are You are Waymaker, miracle worker Promise keeper Light in the darkness My God, that is who you are
Well, you know, uh, we're still celebrating that he is God, Emmanuel, that he is God with us. And even though Christmas is over, we're still going to sing a Christmas song. But it might not be a traditional one you're used to. But, uh, you know, just talking about how he is God, Emmanuel. He is our redeemer. He is our deliverer. He is our savior today. seat today. You know, every week here at Oasis, we take communion together, and this is something, uh, you know, I look forward to every service as we gather uh, to commemorate and remember the Lord's 
supper together. And if you didn't get a chance on your way in to grab some of those communion elements, uh, if you look on each corner of the room, you'll see a table there. You can feel free to get up and grab uh, some of those and take those elements. But today, as we look to, you know, the end of this year, and maybe this hasn't been the greatest of year for you. You know, I think for a lot of us, it might just be an annoying year. But I think some of us, it's been a, just a bad year. And maybe for you today, it's just been the, the worst year of your life. But you know, the, the awesome thing about God is that he is faithful through the storm. So it doesn't, our worship does not depend on our circumstances. So today, as we take these elements, you might be thinking, I, I don't know. I just don't know if I can praise God right now. But I encourage you today to, 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 to look to his goodness, to look to his faithfulness, to look to his kindness. Because he died for us, even while we were yet sinners, even while we were fighting against God, he still chose to send his son into this world to die for us, our punishment, because of our sin. And he took them upon himself to die for us. So that's what we're going to remember here today as we take this bread and this cup of juice to say thank you, Jesus, for dying for me and giving me life and forgiveness. So let's pray together today. God, thank you for loving us with a love that we can't even understand. That yet while we were sinners, you still came to die for us. You still chose us even when we would fight against you and we would forget about you and we would revolt against you. But God, you still chose to love your creation to the point of sending your son to die for us. So today we thank you and we love you. And today, despite our situation, we can say it as well with my soul because we know the king and the creator of the universe who gave us life. Today we thank you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray together. And everybody said, amen. Well, as we continue to sing here, you can take those elements whenever you're ready. Uh, but let's just continue to lift up the name of our God together. Moved by 
We serve an awesome God. Amen. Amen. Welcome to all of you in the house, all of you watching online. We're so glad that you're choosing to worship with us today. I have a couple of announcements to start off with. Today, right after following this service, we're going to tear down the Christmas decorations. I want everybody to stay. We'll have pizza or something. 
<laughs> All of you, make sure you come back, those of you watching online. I know we're going to have some people come back. Next Sunday, we're also going to do something else following services. We're going to rip out the carpet, so any of you guys bring your blades, bring scraping devices, whatever, and we're going to pull this up and get new flooring for that. Um, this Saturday, we have our men's breakfast, 8 a.m. in the house. Uh, so I'll see all you guys there at 8 a.m. Uh, 9 a.m. virtually, ladies. We're going to have a uh, kickoff to a new Bible study virtually. Uh, so that's at 9 a.m. 5 to 6, we have our Heal Our Land prayer gathering here in the auditorium for those of you who want to come and participate in that. Um, make sure you stay connected. We have so much stuff uh, coming on uh, up in January. And by the way, it's Russ Ellis' birthday today, our drummer. Look at that. Look at that. Happy birthday, Russ. <laughs> That's fun, isn't it? So anyway, right now, um, without Pastor Phil is doing everything today. I want to welcome him up here to preach. He's going to bring the message. Give him a warm welcome. <laughs> Woo! I want to stay up here did for you guys, a while. Did you guys see this? The Sermonator. The Sermonator. He won't tell me where he got it from. So hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Philip. Um, I'm the worship guy here, the youth guy as well. Um, but I'm excited. I don't get to do this very often, uh, so I'm excited every time I get to come up and speak. Uh, but we made it. We made it. It is the last Sunday of 2020. I know a lot of people are looking forward to this, uh, just this year being over, uh, kind of putting 2020 in our past um, but, you know, I, I want to kind of recap a little bit of 2020 for us, just in case you forgot. But, uh, you know, this year started off with, with really a bang for me, at least, because, you know, you think 2020 and it's like, oh, that's, you know, hindsight, 2020, something awesome is going to happen this year. You know, it's just something about having 20 and 20 together. You think this is going to be a great year. But then we started hearing about this virus happening overseas. And then people got, you know, it seemed to be just, a, you know, something other people got at first but then it started getting on these cruise ships we heard about and then started going into Europe and then all of a sudden it's here in the states and then uh, you know they shut everything down they stopped travel but of course it's too late then it's spreading everywhere we weren't sure even what it was we heard that it came from this place called Wuhan China from like a bat or somebody or I don't even know where it came from um, but this thing and it just started you know really overwhelming this country and it got to the point where now we're all having to wear masks and we're having to stay six feet apart and all the introverts are like, woohoo! I don't have to talk to anybody and you have to stay six feet away from me now. But you know, um, this crazy stuff happened. And then on May 24th, and I don't know if you, many of you remember this day, um, but this is a day that I'm sure Pastor Greg will never forget um, because this is a day when, well, I'll give you some background. Uh, we had the church doors closed. We did have to close for a little, a little while. So we were recording the services because we didn't have the technology to do live services yes, yet. So we would record them during the week and then show them as though they were live on Sunday. Um, but just something happened during one of these recordings that just, it, it changed Pastor Greg's life forever and changed my life, I think, as well. But luckily we got it on video so you guys can watch that. So this is what we're going to do. I want to have the band come back up. And uh, I'm going to have them come back up and lead us in a song. And, and when they sing, I want us to be able to humble ourselves. Okay, we got to cut that. we got to cut that part. Um, they're attacking me, man. That's, uh, so this will be after the... Uh, Yeah, the one flew right up uh, through my fa right in front of my face at one point earlier. <laughs> you know, and some of you guys might not know this actually, but Greg has been taking karate here for the past couple years, and it shows, right? <laughs> Although somebody told me uh, during one of the services, I don't think he actually hit any of the mods. He's just flailing around. But you know, Greg, every time he's, well, not every time, but sometimes when he's up here, he, he pokes fun at me. So this is my chance to get him back. So I might have a few jabs at Greg in here today. 
Um, but you know, 2020, it's just, it's been a bummer with COVID. And then of course, to make it worse, we had this election year, uh, this year, which made things just crazy. And it seemed like our, you know, our country is just more divided maybe than it's ever been since, uh, you know, the civil war. Cause we had, you know, Trump, Biden, right? We had liberal, conservative, we had Republican, we had Democrat, we had masks, people that are for masks, people that are against masks. Now we have people that are for the vaccine, against the vaccine. We have people uh, going in person and then versus online. And then we had Chick-fil-A and we had Popeyes. We had the warring sandwiches. And now we have In-N-Out and everything else because In-N-Out is the best. And then we have takeout and dine-in, although I don't really know, can we even dine-in anymore? I'm not even sure. Right Twix, left Twix. We had peaceful protests. We had rioting. We have toilet paper over or under. There's only one right way to do it, people. If you're not doing it the right way, figure it out. We had cops. We have defund the police. Guns versus no guns. TikTok versus our sanity, right? iPhone versus Android. PC versus Apple. Homeschool versus school. Oh no, I guess it's just homeschool now, huh? And then we have the big one, Amazon versus everything else in the world because Amazon is taking over, I think. But you know, really, this past year just seemed to be a year of division. We've had division everywhere. It seemed like there was hatred everywhere. There was violence everywhere. I mean, if you were like me, sometimes you turn on the news and it's like, what country are we living in? I mean, this doesn't even seem like our country anymore. And then, you know, of course, even the wildfires, I mean, looking at those, we had this crazy amount of wildfires, especially in California uh, this past year, and I think Australia it was. And then our beloved Alex Trebek passed away this last year. For those of you guys who don't know, he's Jeopardy, the host from Jeopardy. But, you know, people thought the world was ending. So the only logical thing to do if the world is ending is buy all the toilet paper. I still don't understand why we got out of toilet paper. But you know, you might be thinking, oh great, you know, I thanks Phil for recapping that year for us. We feel great now about looking on this. But you know, really, I wanted to say all this because I want to look at this past year in a different way. Because, you know, we tend to think of all the bad stuff that happened, all the things in the media that are kind of put in our faces. We see all the bad things, all the struggling, all the lying. But really, there's so many good things that happened this year that we need to celebrate, that we need to look back on 2020 2020, um, and celebrate. So, you know, I want to start with with baptisms. Uh, You know, we have a a baptism we set up here every once in a while so that we can have people. And and we had 22 people get baptized this last year. Yeah. And it may not seem like a ton, uh, but, you know, for this, this last year, we're going to celebrate that um, because 22 people decided to take that next step in their faith with Jesus, whether it had been for the first time that they were introduced to Jesus or maybe they knew who Jesus was, but they kind of walked away and they decided to come back and be all in. Or maybe they had, uh, you know, grew, grew up in church and gone to church, but they just never said, yes, this is me. I want to jump in and I'm all in. So we had 20 people, 22 people decide that this last year. And, you know, it takes, it, it, it takes a lot to, to get the baptism up to do this, you know, and we have a great amount of volunteers that help out, and we have some wonderful volunteers here. And, in fact, I want one of them to share her story with you. She, she kind of is the one that coordinates all of the baptism stuff, you know, because we have shirts that we give out. We want to make sure that, um, you know, you have extra clothes, uh, towels, all that kind of toiletry items and she's on top of that, making sure that we have that so that we can go through with these baptisms. So listen to uh, what she has to say here. My name is Amanda and I work on the baptism team. And one of the absolute best parts of being on that team is knowing that every person who gets baptized, I'm going to see again. I know that we're gonna spend eternal life together. And so it's like becoming a family member because I know that they will always be there. Um, I love seeing the excitement that the people who are getting baptized have um, and their love for Jesus Christ and like the warmth that fills their body when they come out of the water. 
first time we started doing baptisms, Greg asked me if I wanted to help with the team, get a couple people together to get ready for baptisms, told us, you know, what we needed to do as far as shirts, towels, everything in the bathrooms. And we thought we were only going to have a couple people baptized. And I believe we had 26 people baptized that day. So it was really busy. And so since then, I kind of took over making sure we had all of our towels, enough towels. And I always keep them back of my head, the 26. Do I have at least 26 towels? Do I have 26 garments for people to wear? Um, make sure that everything is in the men's bathroom and the ladies' bathroom. Make sure our connect cards are up. I believe it was after that first baptism that we were like, okay, we need a team. We can't just have a couple people because it can get very, very busy. Yes, and yes. And, you know, I thank all of our volunteers that help with baptism. You know, it's not just Amanda there. Because, uh, you know, when you get baptized at Oasis Church, it's like going to the spa. You know what I'm saying? We got a, that baptism over there has a heater in it. So we get that pool heated up. So it's like getting baptized in a jacuzzi. And you get little slippers and a robe. You go all out. You go all out for baptisms. But, you know, 2020 has been a year of prayer for us as well. Um, and, you know, Jesus said, my house shall be a house of prayer. And that's something we strive for here at Oasis because we want this to be a house of prayer. And so we started something called a prayer wall. And this is on our website and on our Oasis app. We have a page there where you can scroll through and you can post your own prayer requests or you can read others and be able to pray for them. And what's awesome is there's a little uh, button on that prayer wall where you can click, I prayed for you. And so when people go back, you know, they might post something and they can go back to look and know that, you know, so-and-so amount of people are praying for them and how awesome that is just to know that other people are praying for you. And in fact, we have a story here uh, of a a Annette Shepherd. She comes here to our church and she just has a great story about what she has gone through and how prayer kind of helped her through that. Hi, my name is Annette Shepherd and um, just maybe start from the beginning as far as what I've been dealing with the last couple of years. Um, Two years ago, uh, during a, um, just a routine procedure, doctors found um, uh, a mass, and um, after it was biopsied, they found that it was um, cancer, and um, have been going through just about two years of some pretty stressful stuff, um, trying to deal with it in a more holistic way and um, changing a t- total lifestyle and um, going that direction. Um, but what I didn't realize is uh, this April we found out that that it was spreading and it spread really fast and furious. And um, it was coming to a point where um, if I didn't do something about it soon, um, I was looking at hospice. But I was stubborn, and I kept going the route of holistic, really believing God was leading me that way. And um, in July, everything um, kind of came to a, a halt with that, and uh, found myself in the hospital. And Doctors were basically telling me that a hospice was the only option and um, I was not going to survive. Um, so basically get my affairs in order. But I just didn't believe that. And I truly believed that God wasn't quite finished with my story. And I told the doctors that I was ready to fight and um, I wanted to find a doctor who was ready to fight along with me. And thankfully, God sent that doctor to us and um, have been able to start treatments to um, totally turn things around for me. But from the beginning of all this, prayer has been a huge part of my journey. Um, 
I think for the most part, it's always been a more intimate thing because I didn't share a lot of my story at first to others. And while that was awesome and prayer is amazing and it's a great way that I get to communicate with God no matter what, whether I'm mad, furious, happy, scared, um, fearful, um, it was my way of being able to try to sort things out and, and, and just tell him how I was feeling. But it wasn't until I started really sharing what was going on um, with me, with others, with the body of Christ, that I realized how powerful prayer is. Um, because all of a sudden I had all these people, people I knew and then people I didn't know praying for me. And it was humbling and it was amazing. And I could feel it. And there would be days where I would be struggling and having a hard time and I would just get a quick text message that someone was praying for me and that meant the world to me that somebody would think of me. For me it's changed my perspective on really allowing others to be a part of my struggle and my pain um, and being more open with people um, and allowing them to pray for me and how important that is. Um, Uh, I want to go to Matthew 18, and it says this in Matthew 18, 19 through 20. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. You know, there's such power in prayer. And sometimes it's hard, you know, if you're like a net maybe, it's hard to be vulnerable with people. You may not want them to know about some needs you have, but I encourage you today to step out in faith, to let others know what you're going through because we wanna be here. And I don't just mean we as in the staff, I mean we as in the church. We wanna be there for each other. We wanna lift each other up in prayer. So I encourage you, uh, if you go to that next slide there, you'll see where you can go online to find this prayer wall. Uh, if you just go on our website, it's pretty easy to find. Uh, or if you just type in the Oasis Christian Church in your um, Google Play or App Store, you can find our app and you can check it out there. But I encourage you to, to look at those periodically, to be praying for other people in this community, this church. I mean, imagine what we can see happen if we gather together in prayer. We can see relationships restored. We can see uh, sicknesses healed. We can see families united all through the power of prayer. And so I hope today that you would be a part of that. You would join this community, that we would lift each other up as we pray together. So join that, you know, get the app, go on the website, um, and let's pray for each other. You know, uh, we've had a lot of events go on in 2020. Um, a, a few of them we, we've had to cancel, unfortunately, because of COVID. In fact, one of them being the biggest one was our annual Red, White, and Boom celebration. For those of you guys that don't know, this is they shoot the, firework, the fireworks uh, for 4th of July right over here, just, you know, a couple hundred yards away from the building. So people always gather around the building anyway to watch the fireworks. So we thought, hey, let's throw a party so people have something to do before they come. Uh, so that's what we did. Uh, we have, you know, we, we put stuff out in our parking lot. We put jump houses, games, carnival stuff, uh, pony rides, all that good stuff. And we just bless our community. We want them to know that God loves them. And that's simply it. So we go out and bless the community with that. And of course, we weren't able to this last year, uh, which was a bummer. But, you know, I know God had a plan because something else happened. I'm going to come back to that. Okay, but just remember something, something else good happened because of that. Um, but, you know, we're also able to do this thing called Backpacks of Love. We just started that this past year. And this is where we take backpacks and we fill them with food. And we do this for our schools because there's these kids that are on lunch programs and they can't, uh, you know, maybe their family can't afford a ton of food. So while they're at school, they get lunch and they get fed. But then when they go home, they might not have a lot, especially during these breaks. So we have spring break. Uh, you know, Thanksgiving break, Christmas break. So what we do through Backpacks of Love is we fill these backpacks, hundreds of backpacks with food items that we can give them so that they can take them home during these breaks and have food. 
And despite COVID, despite all the mess of this year, we were still able to fill hundreds of backpacks. And thanks to you guys for donating food items. And we just had a wonderful time handing those out. And I think we're still handing them out um, currently because we had an excess of backpacks. So uh, that's just so awesome to see. And coats for kids, you know, this is something we do every year. And it's where we want to give every kid out in Pueblo West that needs a coat, a coat. And honestly, because of COVID, we weren't sure if we were going to do it this year. So we, we were kind of thinking about different things to do. But then the schools actually called us up and said, are you doing coats for kids this year? Because we need coats. We have kids that need coats. And so we we're like, all right, we're going to do it still. And so we jumped in and, you know, normally we go to Walmart, kind of sit outside Walmart, and ask people for donations or for coats. And we couldn't do that this year. So we were, we were like, I don't know how we're going to do it. Um, but you know what? God knew what was going on because last year we had an abundance of coats given and even an abundance of funds given. So we had a leftover amount. So this year we, we may not gotten the, you know, the funds that we normally would, but we were able to give every kid a coat that needed one because God provided for us. And then in September, if you remember, you might have been here, we did a Haiti meal pack. And this is where we packed 30, almost 35,000 meals to send off to Haiti. And this was awesome. And you know, again, with COVID, we were like, I, maybe people will come. <laughs> you know, we weren't sure. But we thought, we're going to do this anyway. We're just going to trust God. And if nobody shows up, you know, we'll pack for a couple hours and just do what we can. But guess what happened? We had the most amount of volunteers that we have ever had at an event. We had 127 volunteers come in to help us pack meals for Haiti. And we were able to almost get 35,000. And honestly, we would have gotten a lot more, but we ran out of supplies. Lifeline Christian Ministries, you know, when they came, they were also suffering a little bit because of COVID. So they brought what we could, but we were able to get through everything that they had in that truck. And in a pretty short amount of time too. And so it was just so awesome to see the body of Christ rising up uh, just to help people, to help you know, meet just such a basic need of food. And, you know, uh, I love these events that we have, but, you know, every week it takes volunteers to help this, this church just keep on moving. And we have, uh, you know, an awesome group of volunteers here. And uh, one of them, I, I wanted to let you guys hear his story. You probably see him all the time. He sits back there in the sound booth. He's probably the one you get mad at if it's too loud in here. Um, but he's got a story to share. So let's hear about that, Ray. I'm Ray. Nice to meet you all. See a lot of you on Sundays. Uh, I'm actually in the sound booth, so a lot of you guys uh, may see the back of my head at times when you come in. I've been serving at the Oasis now for, oh my gosh, it's been about uh, six, six and a half years. We started at the elementary school. Uh, funny story, I was there and uh, a young kid come up to me and and uh, I had been eyeing the, the soundboard and he come up and said, you wanna, you wanna learn how to do soundboard? And I thought, well, of course, I love music. So uh, he had me sit in the stool and next thing I know he takes off and leaves. And, and uh, funny thing is, is while I was sitting there uh, doing the, whatever it was I was doing, which is nothing, uh, looking lost, I accidentally bumped the ma uh, master switch and shut everything off. So that's how I got started in the sound booth. And uh, I'll tell you, I love it. I uh, have no experience uh, really, just minor from a previous church. Uh, volunteering is, is, I'll tell you, it's my heart. I would, uh, I, when I take my weekends off, uh, my daughter races, we're gone for the weekend, I feel lost. Uh, I just don't feel the same. Uh, so coming in, uh, being able to, again, serve, uh, serve the Lord and, and help you all has, has been my dream. It's, it's just, it makes me complete. Uh, when I see you all smile leaving on Sunday, uh, I know it was a great time. Uh, from my family to yours, uh, Please be safe and God bless you all. And we thank all of our volunteers who serve every week. You know, families like Ray who are just here faithfully uh, to serve you guys, to serve the body of Christ, to serve God. And it's so awesome to see. You know, we have a prayer team that's uh, faithful and praying for us every single Sunday. They're up here after each service and they're up here ready to pray with anybody that needs it. Uh, you know, we have an awesome kids ministry team and, you know, covid uh, kind of put a damper on that a little bit, uh, but we were able to get our kids service for the 10 a.m. service back up and running, um, but we have a great kids ministry, 
people come in and set up communion that you see every week and, and make that available to us. And we have people that, well, people that used to set up coffee. We need to get the coffee back. Come on now. Can I get an amen about that? But, you know, hopefully that'll be back pretty soon. Um, but, you know, so many volunteers that just give their time week in and week out. And, you know, there's another volunteer that we have. His name's Tom Shepard. Some of you guys might know him. Um, but he doesn't necessarily serve on a Sunday morning, but he is here faithfully every single Monday night uh, to, to do a ministry that is close and dear to his heart, and I wanted him to tell you about that. My name's Tom Shepard, and uh, I run a recovery group for men on Monday nights at the church. Been running it for about four and a half years, part of it for almost, for more than six years now, I guess it's been. Um, but it wasn't until I realized that I had sin in my life that needed to be dealt with. Um, just, uh, just how detrimental that was to those around me, um, to my family, to just, just everything. Um, and it started out as a small group, um, and we come there to deal with um, sin that we have in our life. Um, we're there to hold each other accountable. Um, but we're, we're there because a lot of times we can have a, a really bad week. And it's already Monday night. Uh, we could have had a, lot, a, a rough week leading up to it. But we can, we can be there um, when we can just vent to one another. We can say, hey, um, I didn't get my work done this week because we are a work group. Um, I believe in, in the power of, you know, working out your salvation and working out issues in your life. And it's not just a passive thing. And you've got to be aggressive about it yourself. And we can hold each other accountable and we can vent to one another. And we can sometimes just, just let the healing happen through listening. Usually doesn't take long for, you know, guys to just finally accept that they're part of the group and to get the work done. And, and sometimes, you know, they don't want to be there on a, on a Monday night, but they know that that's the best place to be. And we always walk away saying the group was great. You know, the group was exactly what we needed. And, um, you know, it's about being um, the best version of ourselves, being the person that God sees us, has called us to be. And we do that for each other. Um, whether it's on a Monday night or it's through phone calls or texts throughout the week. Um, but we always have a, a saying that everybody should be in therapy about something. We all need to heal over something. And just when we feel like we've got one area of our life that we figured out, something else comes up. So, uh, you know, our goal is that our, those who know us best would say that they're, we're different from week to week. We're better. We're, we're more the person that we were supposed to be. And um, sometimes that's not easy. If you feel that this group is right for you, I mean, you can, you can give the church a call, and we're always welcome to have anybody there. Yeah. You know, if you yourself find yourself going through something, and you know, right now, like you said, this is a men's only group currently, uh, but if you find yourself, you know, just struggling with something, maybe it's not an, an, an addiction, Maybe it's just something you can't get past. Maybe it's just some sin you can't get over. Maybe you know somebody like that. I encourage you, join that group. Call up the church, email us. Uh, let us know. It's every Monday night here at the church at 6.15. Uh, but we, we'd love to have you be a part of that so we can help each other grow. Um, but, you know, really it takes volunteers to move this church. I mean, we're a fairly small staff here at Oasis. I mean, it's, it's really three of us that are full-time. Pastor Greg, uh, you guys all know, and you know he only works one day a week on Sundays. Where's he at? Oh, he's not even in here. Uh, and then you have, you know, Chris Gasper. She's our executive admin, and really she's, what, she's who runs this church. She does so much around here. And then myself, I just kind of play with technology and stuff, and it's fun. But, um, and then we have, you know, we have a few part-time people. We have... Um, um, Kate Corcoran, who does our, uh, our volunteer coordination. We have Amber Fisk, who uh, heads up our children's department. And then Harley Eim, who you've, you've seen up here. He kind of looks, he's the Gallagher kind of looking guy, curly hair. But uh, he comes up here and preaches. He's a teaching pastor we have on here. But, you know, despite 2020 and all of its disappointments, maybe all of its setbacks, 
you have kept this church going. You're the reason why the gospel is being spread here in Pueblo West. You're the ones that are passing on the torch that Jesus gave when he set up the church and he gave Peter that, cho- that torch and he said, go, go out into the world. And you know, a few years ago, Pastor Greg gave us this goal. He said he wanted to see a thousand people by the year 2020. And of course, if you look around, we don't see a thousand people, but we, we can celebrate because last Easter, uh, you know, during Easter, we did have to shut down, but we were able to go online and in that whole entire Easter weekend, we saw just over a thousand views for our online services. And that was awesome to see. Um, you know, and, and even more interesting than that, at least to me, I thought was we, we ran some numbers and we were averaging about 388 people pre-COVID, right? PC, pre-COVID. But, but guess what? After COVID, after all this mess, we're actually averaging way more than that now, 482 people. And that's awesome to see. And you know, and a lot of those people are online, you know, because some people still don't want to come back, but we still celebrate that God is still growing his church, even in the midst of all this mess that we've been going through. And you know, uh, I'm going to come back to this red, white, and boom. You know, we weren't able to have it. But normally we would give funds to be able to pay for, you know, a lot of the stuff that we have out there. So of course this year, since we didn't have it, we had a little bit of money left over. So we prayed about it and thought, man, we, you know, we needed to bless somebody with this. And so for those of you guys that don't know, ACPC is a a caring pregnancy center in Pueblo and they cater to young women or young families that might find themselves pregnant unexpectedly. And they come to ACPC um, because they're not sure what to do. And so what they do is they offer them free ultrasounds. They allow them to see their baby. They can see that heart beating. They can see that there is an actual life in their womb and they help them to choose life. And they help them not only to choose life, but they give them classes and they give them uh, the right tools that they need to become healthy parents and successful parents. And so ACPC was doing this renovation of, they bought the building next to them because they wanted to expand. And they're finishing these reservations, but they didn't quite have enough. So we were able to give them a $10,000 check just a few months ago to help them finish that building. And you know, some of you guys probably saw that video that we showed and how awesome it is just to know that we can help out our community in that way. And you know, 10% of all that we get in from the church, we give out to the community, just like a tithe, like we would tithe, we tithe that into our community, whether it be uh, things like ACPC or the Haiti meal pack, or, uh, you know, giving to uh, missions, giving to different ministries. We have love and action that we're able to help out uh, so that they can provide Thanksgiving and Christmas meals. And we're able to give them some money so that they can do that. And, you know, it's just so awesome to see the church moving ahead and the church flourishing. And in fact, a lot of people always ask us about finances. They always say, I, you know, how's it going during this year? Cause you know, we've seen churches close down. We've seen them have to lay off staff. But I wanna tell you guys today that this year, it's been a little bit up and down through the months, but we have actually met and exceeded our yearly budget here at Oasis. This is pretty awesome. It was pretty awesome. Uh, but you know, I read some stats this past week and they were interesting to me. Uh, one of these stats, and we'll put them up on the screens here, said that only 5 to 10% of churchgoers tithe. And I thought, that seems really low. Fact check, right? Fact check that. But, you know, the actual stat, when I realized it was only 5 to 10% of churchgoers tithe a full 10%, which that's what the tithe means. It means literally just 10%. And so then I looked and found that the average churchgoer, really, if you would average out everybody that goes to church, is only 2.5% of their income that they would give back to the church. And what I thought was really interesting is they did a study and they went back to the Great Depression and they found that the average churchgoer actually gave 3.3% during the Great Depression. And then they took it a step further because they wanted to see what would happen. So they... They calculated that if every Christian that attends a church regularly would go and actually give a full 10%, we would have an extra $139 billion in church funds. 
And so there are roughly 300,000 churches in America. And forgive me, this is going to be rough math. But that would mean if you took that 300 or 139 billion and you spread it out between 300,000 churches, that would almost be half a million dollars for every church. And can you imagine what the church could do for their communities if they had that much money coming in and they were able to give that much money going out to be able to help people, to be able to help their communities, to be able to perpetuate the gospel of Jesus. And I'm not saying any of this stuff to make anybody feel bad because we have an awesome church here and we have a church that loves to give. I know a lot of you guys just love to give and I'm so thankful for that. But, you know, just looking at this past year and looking ahead, it's, you know, you, you want to imagine what can we do if there really was that whole 10% there? Because uh, some of you may not know this, but the church only runs off of what, we come, what comes in through the tithe. The government does not give us any money. Some church entity out there doesn't give us any money. We don't have like a head office. The only uh, amount of money that we get is from the local church. And that's what we used to further the gospel here in Pueblo West. So let, let me end with this. As, as we kind of look back on 2020 about the good things and the bad things, uh, it reminds me of this story in Matthew 14. So let's go through the story. And I'm sure you guys have all heard this story. And it starts out like this. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd... And this crowd he's talking about is, uh, you guys have heard the story when Jesus fed the 5,000. He took just a couple loaves of bread and some fish and he was able to feed 5,000 men as they counted. Now, of course, we know that there were probably women and children there. So that number could have been into the tens of thousands. But Jesus did an awesome miracle feeding these 5,000 people. So this is the crowd that he's dismissing. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. And I don't want to pass what it's saying here because sometimes we can just look past this. But do you wonder why in the very beginning it says Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of them? So I read that and I go, why in the world would he make them? So these disciples are out on this boat without Jesus who they've been spending every waking hour with. And so they're out there alone in the middle of this lake getting hit by the waves and the wind going, where's Jesus at? Why isn't Jesus with us? Why did he send us over here alone? And maybe that's how 2020 felt to you. Maybe you feel like you're kind of out there just floating, getting tossed back and forth by these waves saying, where's Jesus? Why isn't Jesus here? I feel like Jesus just left me. But let's continue on. Shortly, starting in verse 25, shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, as they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked onto the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, when Peter saw the wind, he was afraid and he started to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. Listen to what he says here. He says, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And they climbed into the boat and the wind died down. And those who were in the boat worshiped him saying, truly, you are the son of God. You know, 2020 has probably been an annoying year for most of us. Maybe for some of you, it's just been a bad year. Maybe some of you, it's just been the worst year of your life. You know, and and the media doesn't help. Everything bad gets thrown in our faces. I mean, you turn on the news and you see violence, you see civil unrest, you see fraud, lying, scandal, all kinds of just terrible things happening. But as Christians right here, right now, you are the Peters 
in that story. And you have a choice to make. Because if we focus on all these bad things that are happening, we're gonna be just like Peter when he looked at the waves and said, I'm afraid, I can't do this. I'm feeling overwhelmed. The, the wind and the waves are gonna consume me. And he started to sink. And maybe, maybe that's what's happening to a lot of us today. We're looking back at 2020 and saying, I just can't do it. There's too many things. There's too much lying. There's too much uh, whatever it may be. There's too much bad news going on. And that's all you're focusing on. But I want to tell you today, Jesus is saying, look at me. Set your eyes on me because I will never fail you. The only reason Peter started to sink is was because he took his eyes off of Jesus. And it's so easy to look back on 2020 and say, ah, oh, this is just a year we can forget. We don't like last year. And I can understand that from some of your stories. But maybe 2020 is a year we can look back on and have just a different mindset. Because you know, when Jesus made the disciples go out in front of him, there's a reason why he did that. I don't think that was by accident. Because maybe he wanted to see what they were made of. You know, you buy a tube of toothpaste from the store. I hope you guys buy toothpaste. But you, you really don't know what's in it until you squeeze it and see what comes out. And I think Jesus was doing that with his disciples. He sent them on ahead. He knew what was going to happen. He said, I want to see what they're made of. So while they're in this boat being tossed back and forth to see what they would do, to see if they would have faith, and maybe Jesus is doing that to you today. Maybe he's applying just a little bit of pressure because he wants to see what you're made of. He wants to see what's on the inside. So 2020, is it a year to forget? Or is it a year to prove what you're made of and to remember who God is and why we serve him because he is the, the God that can calm any storm. The wind and the waves, they still obey their creator and God is their creator. So if we can all just bow our heads here this morning and if you need to, you can close your eyes. But today I just want you to think back on this past year and to say, have I been, did I take my eyes off of Jesus? Did I get consumed with what's been going on in the world? And I've just been focusing on that so much that I've, I forgot that Jesus is in charge, that the wind and the waves obey him. So you have a choice to make going into 2021. Will it be the same as 2020? Because we can't always be in charge of what happens to us. We can't always be in charge of if the wind comes up or if the waves come or if we get that bad health news or if we lose a job or we lose a family member. But what we are in charge of is where we look to. And I encourage you today today to look to Jesus this next year because he is the author and creator of our faith of our lives he created us he knows us he knows you and he knows what you can handle so there might be a little bit of a pressure applied But will you be like Peter and will he reach down to grab you and say, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? Let's pray. God, thank you for today and thank you um, just for the, the good things that you've done this last year. And I know we, we like to think of all the bad things that happened, but God, we wanna rejoice in the good. We want to look back on our own lives and see your hand at work. 
And God, I pray that you would give us the faith as we go into this next year to keep our gaze set on you. That even in 2021, if, if things don't look up, if COVID still is running rampant, if fires still happen, if natural disasters still go on, if we still get those bad health news or job news or whatever it may be, God, we still want to focus on you. We don't want to let go of our gaze on you. So God, today we decree that we will look to you. So I pray that you would help us to have that faith today. To know that today is the day that you have created and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, why don't we go ahead and stand today as we close out and we're going to sing one last song. And as you leave, you know, you can feel free to give. We have giving boxes in the back. You can go onto your app. You can go onto the website and give through there. But I just hope that you can give joyfully to the Lord on this last Sunday in 2020. But let's celebrate uh, that he is God, our Savior, and that uh, he is still alive and working today. Oh, 
last Sunday of 2020. I guess we'll see you back here next year. Have a great week, everybody.